Hey folks, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Today in this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different this time. We're actually in Cinema 4D, and I'll be doing my first Cinema 4D tutorial. And so my apologies if I'm not maybe pronouncing a name right, or maybe I'm miscalling a window or a panel or an object. So bear with me. Let's see how it goes. Because it's my first time, we're gonna make it kind of simple here, just to see how things will work out. But in this video, this is what we're gonna be creating today. So as you can see, nothing too amazing, but we do have some pretty cool text here, and we have that um, nice rotation and some random movements here. And of course, we're going to bring it into After Effects. Once we're all done, we're going to composite it, add some uh, composite elements here, such as the smoke and the environment and some polishing lights and some color grading and stuff like that. So just going to polish it up in After Effects. But in this part, we're actually in Cinema 4D. So let me go ahead and start fresh here. I'm in Cinema 4D but you'll be able to follow in pretty much any version of Cinema 4D. So let's go ahead and go to File, New, and we'll start fresh here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my render settings, and I wanna change the output from 800 by 600 to 1280 by 720, and this is just 720p. And then we'll just change frame range to all frames, so it's gonna render all the frames. And uh, let's just close that for now. And we'll just extend our timeline from 90 frames to 200 frames, just so we have a larger area to work with. And so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my type. So for that, you can use Illustrator Path or Splines or whatever you want, or Extrude Nerbs. I'm gonna use the MoGraph MoTeX, just because it's a lot easier. So we have our text here. I'm gonna change the text to Creative Dojo. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the font to a more uh, prettier looking font. So let's just select a font here. Go with that one. We'll change the align from left to middle. And we'll just go ahead and increase the horizontal spacing just a little bit. It's a little bit too tight for me. And that's good. So let's go ahead and create our camera just to set this thing up. So create a camera. We'll go into the camera settings here. We'll go into the coordinates. And I just want to zero this thing out so we have a flat camera to work with. And then we'll go ahead and enable the camera so we're viewing our scene through our camera. And I'll just reposition this a little bit. And I'll just zoom out. And just position our text kind of in the middle of the canvas here. And let's go back into our MoTeX and go ahead and increase the uh, depth here. We want some thicker extrusions. We also want to add some nice fillet caps for the start and end. And we'll just um, decrease the radius from five to four on the both, the start and the end, just so we have a very kind of thick bevel here. And so that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and get the main stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and start on the animation right away. We'll worry about texturing and line a little bit later. So let's go ahead and um, apply some random rotation movement to this text and just create the camera moves. So for the randomized uh, text lettering here, we're gonna go into the MoGraph and go to the effectors and select the random effector. And that's just gonna randomize our text here. And now, this is not the style that I want, so I'm gonna go into the random effector here. And I'm just going to go into the parameters. And I'm gonna uncheck the position. So we don't want the random effector to affect the position of our text. We actually only want it to affect our rotation. But of course, feel free to experiment with all this thing. So I'm just gonna add some uh, rotation here. Just so we have some random rotation for our letters to make it look a little bit more dynamic rather than our static type. So once we have that done, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to be animating the strength here. So we're going to, uh, I guess, start at 200. We want quite a bit of messiness here, so or maybe even 150. And then we'll go ahead and hit a keyframe. So hit Control Command and click on the, I guess, the circle here to create a keyframe. We'll move forward and we'll go ahead and change this to zero and then hit a keyframe. So what we have is a messed up rotated text object here and then as we progress it's going to get back into place and it's going to look pretty normal at this point here. So let me just play it back, see how it looks. I'm going to go ahead and extend this just a little bit more to around here just so we have a nice rotation here. Now let's go ahead and work on the position animation for the text. So I'm going to select our mode text. 
I'm gonna go into the coordinates here and uh, we'll go to around right here and we'll hit a keyframe stop watch for the uh, I guess the Z position so I'm kind of mixing up the terminologies from After Effects and Cinema 4D here. So let's just um, move to the beginning here and we'll just push this thing way back in Z space. So we're going to be creating somewhat of a flyby effect. Just enough so we don't see it in the camera anymore. Hit a keyframe. So what we have now is our text flying in. And as it's flying in, it's also uh, animating back to the original position here. So let me just play it back. And then we can go back and tweak some of these keyframes here. Uh, by default, Cinema 4D makes them all easy ease, so it should be uh, pretty easy. Increase it a little bit and just play this back real quick. You know, something like that, of course, feel free to experiment and uh, tweak around with all these keyframes here. So let's go ahead and work on the materials now. So I'm going to create a new material by double clicking onto the material panel right here and it's going to create a new material. We can go into the color here and load a texture. So we're going to load an image. Now I want to select this metal texture here, but you can find a lot of metal textures online via Google or maybe a stock site. But I'm just going to import a nice dark grungy uh, metal texture here. All right, so I'm going to double click on the materials here because I don't like to work in this panel right here. I want to work in the materials editor. And um, we'll go ahead and go into the specular and just take care of this first. I'm going to go ahead and increase the height. So we have a very, very sharp, uh, I guess, hard specular here. We'll just go ahead and decrease the width a little bit. Something like that. And we'll go into the reflections, enable reflections. And we want a very, very subtle reflection here. So we'll go into the textures, add a Fresnel reflection. It's just going to blend out and curve out the uh, reflections here at the edges. And we'll just lower the brightness down and lower down the mix strength. So we have a very, very, very subtle reflection here. And we'll just see how that looks. We'll drag it into our text. And as you can see, we have some issues here. Uh, let's go ahead and select our materials. And then for projection, we'll hit uh, cubic because we have a flat image. You may want to play around with your projection, but I know that cubic works for mine. And then we'll check seamless so we don't have any uh, harsh edges here. So, so let's go ahead and do a quick render. And this is looking okay, but we have the default lights in and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and create a new light. And we'll call this one top light. And then first thing we wanna do is go into the light and we wanna go and enable shadows. Rendering, I'm gonna select the shadow map soft instead of the area. And so we have our light now and we're casting shadows. And of course you can play around with the density and all that stuff. But I'll keep it at default for now. And I'll just raise this light on the very, very top of our scene. I'm going to uncheck our camera so we can just freely navigate without messing around with our camera. And let's go ahead and just position this light at the very, very top so we kind of get this nice top bevel here. And somewhere around there. Uh, we'll duplicate it one more time. We'll call this one backlight or rim light. And it's going to act like a rim light for the back of our text. We're not really going to want to illuminate the back of our text too much. We just want a very subtle light just so we have something in the background. We'll go back into the camera view. And uh, we'll just position the backlight until it looks pretty good. And we'll go into the coordinates and uh, just push it back a little bit. And do a quick render. You know, something like that. Uh, you may want to push it back just a little bit more. And then maybe uh, decrease the brightness a little bit. So we'll change the uh, brightness intensity down to maybe around 75. And we'll kind of give it this cool blue color. Just tint the, the light very, very subtly. This kind of blue teal color here. And we'll change the top light to kind of a warm light, just so we have some variation in the colors, just so it's not just pure black and white. Okay, cool. So we just have a very basic lighting setup, not the greatest lighting here. Of course, you can play around with it. See, when we're kind of transitioning uh, in here, you can see that it's just pitch black. And that's because our light is not actually hitting the text here. So let's go ahead and create a new light. I'm just going to uncheck the views. I'm going to create a new light. So duplicate this one. 
we'll call this one front light and we'll just push it back just far enough so that our animation is illuminated when it first starts. We want it to make it kind of dark in the beginning. We don't want it too bright here. So we'll just change this intensity down to maybe around 30 so it's not too bright. Let's just check it out here. Let's go to the beginning of our animation and see how this looks like. And maybe we can make it just slightly brighter, maybe 50% here. Yeah, just enough so we can see the details. Of course, we're doing some color correction and color grading to make this thing look a little bit nicer. So it's going to fall into place. Check it out. And then I think maybe we can even decrease the top light intensity down to maybe around 80%, just so it's not too bright. Now, one final thing that I did in the original shot or in the original project is I created a landscape object just so we have a very subtle background texture. So I created a landscape here. I'm going to change it to Z. And uh, let's just uncheck the camera here. Rotate to the side. We'll just push this thing back. Change the orientation to negative Z. My mistake. Push it kind of far back. And then we can increase the size. Go back into our camera. We can increase the size a little bit. So it fills our whole scene here. Increase the height. And then we can just play around with the width segment here. And play around with all these settings and parameters until we kind of get this, I guess, natural abstract background. So by messing around, you can kind of get these bumpy textures. You can apply bump maps to it and stuff like that. But I just did it really quickly just to have some kind of background, some kind of texture in the background. Of course, you can do this in After Effects. I just wanted to try it out in Cinema 4D here. So I'm going to duplicate this material. I'll call this one uh, Landscape. And we'll call this one Text. We'll go into the Landscape. We'll apply it to our Landscape. And it's kind of the same exact material, so not a different texture. Of course, you can play around with the texture yourself and add a new one. I'm going to go in here, turn off the reflections, and turn off the specular. And then for the color, for the texture, I'm going to go ahead and add a filter. And that's going to allow me to play around with the contrast, the brightness. I'm going to really lower down the brightness a little bit and decrease the contrast. And just do a quick preview. And as you can see, we kind of have this grungy metal grunge texture in the background. Just so we have a subtle background to work with some, some kind of texture in the background. So one final thing before we render, we forgot to animate the camera a little bit here. So the camera is kind of static. So we want the camera to start at the beginning here. So we'll select the camera, it goes to the coordinates. And we want to just zoom in a little bit so we don't see our text here. We'll hit a keyframe for the Z position. We'll move to the end and we'll just zoom out a little bit. Be around there. Just so we have a very subtle uh, movement. Just like that. And of course, as you can see, our landscape is not big enough, so we'll just scale the thing up. Go to the end here. Go into our landscape. And uh, we can just scale this thing up to kind of fill our frame. Just something like that. And then now we can go into our render settings. Make sure that all of our render settings are correct. So we have 720p, we have all frames. You can go ahead and add ambient occlusion if you wanted to. I'm not going to do it in this case. Make sure that all of our save parameters are correct. So I'm going to save it somewhere. And then we want to make sure that we have an alpha channel. And once you're done setting up all the names and format, you can go ahead and render by rendering it to the picture view or however you want to render it. I usually just render it to the uh, picture view over here. So this is pretty much it for this part of the tutorial. In the next part of the tutorial, we're going to bring into After Effects. We're going to really add some major color correction, major color grading. We're going to composite some smoke into there and add some lighting and just make it look a lot prettier than what it is now. 
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this first Cinema 4D tutorial. I know it's kind of rough for me and I know the results aren't that great. But hopefully as I get more familiar with doing tutorials in Cinema 4D and kind of messing around experimenting then hopefully the tutorials will be better and the uh, results will be a lot better as well. It's kind of new, kind of different than working in After Effects because you know you're more experimenting in Cinema 4D than anything else, especially in After Effects. So that's pretty much it for this part of the video tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Once again, my name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.